Welcome back to NJFYI. Now it's time to head out on the Passaic River. Our partners at NJ Advance Media have been following what's being called the biggest toxic cleanup in U.S. history. The Environmental Protection Agency has pledged nearly $2 billion to clean up the river, one of the most polluted stretches of water in the country. It takes an army of dedicated professionals to take on the challenge. So today we focus on one of the foot soldiers. Mila Ramirez with the Passaic River Institute right here at Montclair State University. University. She grew up in the shadow of the mighty Passaic and has dedicated her career to bringing the river back to health. My name is Myla Ramirez. I work as a microbiologist for the Passaic River Institute. We're over in Patterson um, where the Passaic River actually just runs through. I've grown up with the Passaic River um, and really just its tributaries right in my backyard so I've always kind of uh, been attached to the river. Surprisingly no one ever talked about it. it wasn't really until college and once I started working with the Sacred River Institute that I kind of found out how much industry and pollution really affects us here in New Jersey. There was a dock right out here and I saw a bunch of people actually jumping into the river, swimming, playing in the river um, and back then there used to be a lot of that recreational activities on the river but now not so much anymore. I think it's kind of understood generally that no one ever tries to go swimming into the Passaic River. I talked to someone um, who actually had a friend that tried to canoe the whole way down the Passaic River and he actually had a really bad rash um, come out of it. There are certain pockets of the river where people like to go canoeing and such but still it's kind of just said don't ever just fall into the Passaic River or come out with like three arms or something like that. So there's this one fact, the number one leading cause of death around the world, surprisingly, is by dysentery through unclean water. Um, and I think ever since I found out that fact, I've been really passionate about water quality issues. So I went to Montclair State University as a molecular biology major with a concentration in microbiology. And in my junior year, I got into a research program with the Passaic River Institute, so I did a lot of the microbiology work for them. And from there, they just kept asking me to come back, and so I've kind of become their microbiologist. When we test for water quality, um, there's a lot of different parameters that we'll use to try and measure the health of the water. I think it's really important to know what's in your water, especially a lot of this area's flood zones. So when this area floods, how does it affect the basement in your homes? What types of contaminants are really getting into your house? Um, I think that's a really important thing that everyone should really be aware of and care about. I've found my niche of where I can be the most effective, just on my knowledge and my skills. There wasn't one specific instance, it's kind of when I realized that I'm passionate about the communities and I'm passionate about the environment because I'm so local to the river and I care about the water quality and I care about people's health and I really feel like that's probably the best fit of where I'm supposed to be at. The impact of it could be really great if we could just imagine using our rivers and not having it be really taboo to try and go into the river, dip our feet into the river, to take our kids out into the rivers and take our families out, I think it'd be a really great thing for us, every community along the river to have. Well, joining us now is Sean Sullivan, a reporter for NJ Advanced Media. His work appears on NJ.com and in the Star Ledger. He's been covering the Passaic cleanup. Also joining us is Mei Wu. She's the director of the Passaic River Institute right here at Montclair State. Welcome to you both. It's lovely to have you. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, Sean, you've been covering the story from all angles. Why is coverage so important? Well, for a long time in this country, uh, rivers were kind of integral to economic development. You have cities like Patterson, which was the first planned industrial city in the United States, and it was put right at the Great Falls because that was so important to its development. You have you know, cities like Newark, which were major industrial drivers, and, and the river was, was so important to that. So it's, it's an economic issue, and then you also have kind of the environmental justice aspect, which is now some of these cities are some of our most vulnerable communities, and they're right along the river. So there, there's kind of a, a need to remedy the situation that has been created in, in the, the Passaic, which is one of the most polluted rivers in the country. Yeah, there's a lot of factors at play here. Now, Mayan, I'm curious, can you give us a sense of the timeline? I mean, is, is there a chance that we may actually to be able to swim and take a dip in the Passaic one day soon? That's a very good question, and certainly the whole community is hoping that soon we'll be able to use the river once again. Unfortunately, there are a lot of uncertainty on the table right now. For instance, right now, uh, EPA is trying to decide among all the proposals which one would be the best one to go forward based on the common collective from the public during the public hearing period. Once that's decided, um, we will have a period of time that needed to plan the whole construction, 
and after that is the actual implementation. So are we talking 5, 10, 15 years? Give us a ballpark. Uh, it might be longer than that. Longer uh, than 15 no years? One can predict at this time. Really? And the biggest fa fear among the community is if the case ever got dragged in court, it might delay the whole progress. Sean, I want to talk to you about how this is all being paid for. So there, there are kind of two uh, joining issues here, and, and you have the, the EPA's plan, which is this robust $1.7 billion uh, plan, and then you have uh, the, the state, which is seeking remedy on behalf of the, the citizens of New Jersey. This is a, a resource, so they get uh, natural resource damages. Um, and that suit uh, is, uh, uh, they've sued a couple of the, the responsible parties and, and they've gotten, um, you know, the last settlement was uh, $190 million. And some environmental advocates want to see the money that the state has recovered uh, to be used directly to remedy the river instead of being diverted to the, the general fund. I want to thank you both so much for being here. We've really enjoyed uh, your insight.